Okay, now watch this. I'm just gonna break the wrist and walk away. Break the wrist, walk away. Jeez. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to Priority Holder, and today we'll be playing Blue White Humans in the Timeless format. Now I was tinkering around with humans for a while, but eventually realized it was like a pretty potent anti-show and tell deck. And so like one of the main ways to do that was with Meddling Mage, which when it enters you can choose a card and no one can cast that card as long as Meddling Mage is in play. So if you can slam this early and like name show and tell, then they're in big trouble. Another one that really works well against show and tell and against Storm in general is, is Thalia Guardian of Thraven, which taxes non-creature spells. And not to mention we have some Witch Enchanters against show and tell, also could blow up an Omniscience if we drop it into play. So that was the main idea, but humans are also very potent at shelling out damage thanks to Thalia's Lieutenant, which places a 1-1 counter on each human, and Copper Coat Vanguard, which boosts their power and gives it all of the humans Ward 1. So you may see we're also playing the Inspectors to go along with Warden of the Inner Sky, which can sort of build itself up and give you some card selection. And of course, super strong human, Guide of Souls, and a little bit of card advantage with the Convoking uh, Knight Errant of Eos. So we're just trying to sort of do a little bit of disruption and crash in for a ton of damage. Let's jump to the games. This is a pretty fantastic opening hand. Like anytime you have like some one drops in a cavern, and so we'll have to see where this develops. Turn one fable, opponent fabled passage. Yeah, definitely gonna slam cavern, and you always want to leave with guide of souls just to build up the energy counters. Like it is a removal magnet also, so but you know the upside's really huge. Oh, okay, opponent's gonna just shoulder Cedric it away. All right, now what do we do next? So we can just grab planes here because Cavern's going to fix our meddling mage. It definitely seems like we should play Warden of the Inner Sky plus one of our inspectors. That's going to give us the requisite like three permanents to do the scry ability on Warden. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And you know, we're low on lands, but another Guide of Souls would be awesome. So we'll see what the opponent does. Are right, they going to thought seize us, taking away our knight? Makes sense that, like, if they're fighting any sort of card advantage battle against us, that's gonna be bad news for them. So, we're gonna go Guide of Souls into Inspector. And, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm trying to figure out what things to tap. Honestly, it doesn't, like, our summoning sick creature is not really gonna matter. So, I'm gonna bottom this land, like, hoping to find more action. Now, it would allow us to double spell next turn, so, like, there's that. We're gonna smash in for four damage, see what the opponent has for us. Right, they're shocking that in. Toxic Deluge. Does bring them down to eight, and so we're we're gonna need to rebuild. Um, still holding off on meddling mage because I'm just not quite sure what the opponent is on yet. Like I could name like one of the cards we've seen already, but um holding out. Oh, okay. Won't have to worry about that. Thought Seize is gonna take that away, but the opponent does fall to six, and we draw Copper Coat Vanguard, which is gonna dish out a ton of extra damage right now. The opponent falls to two. They're gonna need something. Deluge won't do it, and yeah, the opponent packs it in. So, um, pretty nice little win. We're on to the next game. So, keeping this hand, no cavern this time, but you know, um, strong opener still. We'll lead with Warden and see where this takes us. Opponent's fetching turn one. Green red land, and they're gonna bolt the board. Makes sense. Witch Enchanter. Um, doesn't. Well, it could be a Witch Enchanter matchup. Gonna go ahead and play the fetch, though, just so we, we do have one uh, surveil duel, so we can grab that. Set up for the meddling mage and just make better use of turn. Alright, Ragavan from the opponent. And passing back to us, we're gonna get our surveil land. Feeling pretty good about the double knight errant of Eos that we have. Meddling Mage. Just gonna bin that. Like once again, like don't really know what we need to name yet against them. Alright, gonna slam cavern. Name human. And yeah. Going to play meddling mage. And I'm gonna just choose Fable of the Mirror Breaker here because that's like one of the strongest red cards. And hold back, you know, to have, make sure we have a Ragavan blocker. 
Alright, Utopia Sprawl. And there's stone raiding the cavern. Okay, so we're playing some sort of uh, like Ponza deck right now. Which means that Fable was probably a good thing to name. So we'll have to see. Um, I'm trying to decide what to do with this turn. I just decide it's worth bolting in the land to get the Knight Errant Convoke. You, like, convoking two creatures is like basically perfect because it allows us to pick anything except for other Knight Errants. So like, as long as we're convoking at least two, we're gonna be able to like grab two cards. As long as you get enough hits. And yeah, the opponent just packs it in. So it could be that like we had a soul read right there with the uh, the fable name because the game really didn't seem like it was over. But I don't know. Maybe they maybe we amassed too much card advantage for them to deal with. So on to the next one. Right, the opponent just shocks in the watery grave. Happy that we have cavern for any shenanigans. Stern scolding is not gonna get us. And they're gonna stifle our fetch. All right, opponents come to play. All right, so Guide of Souls is gonna get a trigger. And we're just gonna attack in, see what happens. But um, luckily we're a low curve deck, so like losing one land is not the end of the world. Um, Thalia just drew, or Armina Harker version. Feels incredibly safe, you know, caverning out a, a Thalia. Just, such an amazing feeling. The opponent is hesitating. Now bowmasters would still be really tough. I think that's like that's like the major major downside of Thalia is to how popular bowmasters is, but it is like really strong in the format right now. Like stop like really strong gets show and tell and storm and that kind of stuff. So and going to play gonna bolt in the witch enchanter land and then convoke out a knight errant and the auto tapper's been a little weird I just wanted to make sure I got it to be uncounterable and I'm not attacking in with Thalia just because opponent has so much they could have right now and let's see what we can get all right seems like meddling mage plus inspect one of the inspectors would be really good and gonna crash with guide of souls and just gonna go ahead and use the energy Put some on. Put them under some pressure, and see what the opponent has. All right, they're gonna fatal push our guide of souls, but they're they're like in big trouble. Like we have a ton of damage we can deal with them. Looking at what they have to see what we can name. I'm gonna play meddling mage, and I end up naming a toxic deluge here. Just sort of scarred from that other match, but honestly, like probably shouldn't just name like orcish bowmasters because. Um, considering how much we're attacking him for, like, Deluge isn't going to do anything anyway. I'm going to go ahead and play the Novice Inspector. Play a fetch land. You could just see how this, this deck can just sort of shell out a ton of damage while, like, make making certain strategies really hit the brakes. Alright, one ring. Okay, so, opponent has some time. There is one vulnerability, like, once the... Like, the opponent's chaining one rings, or, you know, we can't really do anything about it in this deck. Unless you, like, preemptively name it off Meddling Mage, or just tax them out of it with Thalia. So, like, they did have to wait till turn 5 to do that, because of our... I don't ever know if it's Talia or Thalia, so you might hear me flip-flopping between them. <laughs> Depends on what region you're from, I guess. And the opponent, just, they just pack it in, so... If you like seeing uh, the one ring get got, then uh, flanking troops like button around the next one. Um, start with cavern, play one of our inspectors. So I'm, I'm uncertain as to like, there's a lot of options for humans. All right, ruin crap and opponent. Um, the inspectors play really nice with like warden of the inner sky, you know, giving all those extra clues. Plus the clues can just help you dig if the game gets long. They are sort of bad against like bowmasters, the clues themselves, but the, the inspectors have two toughness. So it's like a trade-off, like they're harder to kill, but they also can't kill the opponent as well as like two ones that are available, so. Um, it's unclear what, what the best approach is. All right, so opponent's gonna fatal push Arthalia. And what do we do now? Every time I'm cracking a fetch against Mill, I'm like bracing for impact that there's gonna be like a, okay, so this was a surgical, it wasn't the, uh, 
praying sanity, I believe it's called. So now we want all of our mana available. So we're gonna play Thraven Inspector. Opponent is giving some priority passes. I don't know if they have another surgical hand. Thought I was Lieutenant's gonna build them up a little bit. Still like can't like the stupid rune crab, we can't get through it. Alright, so let's see what the opponent does. Scheming Symmetry, which is a really strong card. In, it's basically Vamp or like Imperial Seal, I guess, would be the one. Um, they put something on top. We do as well, but they can so easily mill. And I, I was shocked to see that the card I chose wasn't milled. Um, because uh, usually that's like what the, the little ploy is from mill playing Scheming Symmetry. So I'm just going to name what I think they probably grabbed against us, which is Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And the opponent's going to immediately drown the lock meddling mage, so makes me think we probably guessed correctly right there. And it could attack in a bit, but it seems like really opportune to play Knight Errant and just refuel right now. Oh yeah, Warden of the Inner Sky plus Guide of Souls. Yes, please. Okay, so that's going to be a really strong next turn. There's the Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Now we have stuff like Witch Enchanter and Knight Errant that makes that way less potent against us. Like we just have some like chunky spells that so that Tasha's Hideous Laughter doesn't completely get us. So I'm gonna leave Guide of Souls and then play Warden of the Inner Sky. And can go ahead and activate Warden right here to scry because yeah, we do have another potential land drop with our Witch Enchanter. So if we can draw like a one drop here, yeah, like Warden right now. So if we crack a clue and then play the Witch Enchanter down, we can really, really go off. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So play the Witch, Ench Witch Enchanter. Life totals definitely do not matter in this matchup. So, or at least our life total doesn't. All right. Only at two energy though. So we're going to crash in with everything. And opponent's gonna block, and they fall to four. Let's see what the opponent has. Maddening Cacophony. We still have a healthy 10 cards that and they pack it in. So that worked out pretty nicely. And green, blue, surveil and surveilling away Lorien revealed. Um, you know what that means, that we're face facing against show and tell. Now, this is a deck that I'd sort of designed to be extremely good against show and tell. We have four witch enchanters, four meddling mages, and four Thalias. So that opponent's gonna turn to assemble the team. Um, so, I'm super glad they didn't thought seize there, because they would have nabbed, or did we just draw Thalia? Anyway. That's definitely what we're going to play right now. Just to, it's going to tax their whole deck. It's going to slow them down by at least a turn on every spell. So, I'm going to crash in for one. Okay, so the opponent misses a land drop. So they must have taken like a, they must have grabbed like a show and tell. And we're just going to hope, you know, wait till they got a land. But with the cavern out, we're going to, you know, put Talia's lieutenant and actually start dishing out some damage now now there's always like this sequencing question like do you want to play all your creatures and then Thalia's lieutenant or the other way around to boost Thalia's like there's always the sequencing so I did it in the opposite order there but I think typically you want to play as many creatures and then play Thalia's lieutenant so but yeah we finally got enough energy and so we're just gonna smash it and just really try and clock them just to get this game over with. And yeah, the pawn's gonna pack it in. So um, yeah, they, they probably were planning on like brainstorming into trying to get like a fetch or something like that. And we, well, I guess they would have been able to cast that. So yeah, I don't know what happened, but they always happy to win against a show and tell. Turn one warden, see what they have. Green, white land. Um, yeah, it seems. With the Copper Coat Vanguard, I always want to get as many creatures on board first. Uh, not to mention, like, playing the Inspectors let us uh, activate Warden of the Inner Sky. 
that seems like a good one to play, so we'll keep that on top. Even though, like, we only have two lands, like, th these are super high impact spells for us, so it seems okay. Cleric class, right. And Arid Archway, so the opponent's cooking over there. Those are not cards commonly seen in Timeless, though a lot of what we're playing isn't either, so. We're gonna activate Warden. It's just such a strong card. Guide of Souls. Um, putting it on the bottom just because it, it does not allow us to double spell, like, and it seems like we'll be in pretty okay shape. Like, Pawn's gonna need something amazing here, like Toxic Deluge, to even have a ghost of a chance. So they just replay their land, and honestly, we're not even gonna get to see what their deck's trying to do because they're just gonna be dead right now. And I was about to crash in, like, you know what, for due diligence, and you should activate Warden just to make sure. And yeah, we're just gonna bottom that. Though maybe there's an argument for topping it because we have like those knight errants, but yeah, the opponent's just dead. So we didn't get to quite see what they were doing. Move on to the next one. Another strong hand. My opponent's on six cards. Cavern on human. Gonna lead with warden. We're gonna have to play the witch enchanters as our other lands. All right, bobble from the opponent. Bobbling themselves. All right, so then they're cracked. They didn't like their top card. All right, they're gonna get a surveil for good measure. They're drawing up their bobble card. So there's always the question of, do you try and like soul read with a meddling mage? Like we don't have a lot of information of what the opponent's on. Like they're non Luris deck playing bobble. I decided just to go for copper coat vanguard and just hold off on meddling mage just so we have a little bit more information. So red, black. Going to pay the three life. Play Guide of Souls. And once again, it's like, do I play the meddling mage? Like name like Thoughtseize or something, or just like So I'm trying to you know what what would you name right here? Like it's 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 a question, like it's not entirely clear what the opponent's doing. I'm just gonna name Orcish Bowmasters because that's like a strong card in black. Though maybe there's a clue from how the opponents played that would, that maybe maybe one maybe one of your viewers can like key in on what the opponent's doing. But as you can see, Orcish Bowmasters probably was not the correct thing based on what they've been playing now. Now it's obvious their opponent is doing something else entirely. So we've seen multiple zero cost artifacts. So there's some sort of like storm some sort of combo deck trying to abuse the zero cost artifacts. I'm gonna play that. And we're about to crash in for a ton of damage once this Thalia's Lieutenant hits the battlefield. And, all right, let's see with that. So yeah, once we can activate Warden, we have some summoning sick creatures plus a clue. And you could see through these, like, Warden is super strong. Like every one of these games, it's like these scries it lets us do plus the one one counters are just immensely clutch so we're gonna attack all and the question always is like what to use the guide of souls counters on i'm trying to figure out, i'm gonna put it on guide of souls itself because i imagine you know meddling mage is usually a, a high priority target but in this matchup i think i named like the wrong card so it's not that big a deal the opponent was forced to chump there to survive, so at least they lost a little bit of their like material to work with at that ornithopter. My opponent cracks their fetch. Bone saw is ready. Beseech the mirror. So I'm like bracing for impact here. I'm like, okay, here we go. Opponent only has one life though. Song of creation. Okay. So I'm going to accelerate through this, but the opponent just plays like a ton of zero cost artifacts in. I'm like, I, I don't think there's any way they can gain mana at this point. Like, there's Mox Amber, but, you know, they have to sort of have a legend in play. And so they, they end up playing a million things and just conceding. So we, we got them low enough so that they couldn't properly leverage Song of Creation. So happy to see that. Turn one Warden go. Uh, Cavern of Souls is, like, incredibly strong and timeless. Like, I've been playing it in more decks, and, like, when it's good, it is insanely good. So... It's just something to pay attention to. Like, if there's any tribes you want to try out in Timeless, like, 
throw some Cavern of Souls in there and have at it, because it is really good. Like, when opponent wants to mana drain something and they just can't. And caverning out Athalia is, like, even more fun because then they're in big trouble. So, opponent passing. Um, played Thalia because of the, like, I saw the one ring there. And in nightmare scenario, the public enemy number one, Orcish Bowmasters, cuts down Thalia before Coppercoat Vanguard can come into play. So, um, uh, maybe against black decks. See, that's the thing is like, if this was like a dark ritual um, kind of stormy deck, then we'd be super glad Thalia was out there turn two. This turned out to be sort of a mid rangey one, which I wasn't able to get like a read on early enough. And so, ran Arthalia right into a Bowmasters, and now it's just not looking quite as good. So, Harvester of Misery, um, cutting down our Copper Coat Vanguard, which was like really sort of opening up some attacks for us. So, things are sort of falling apart. Happy to scry that land away, but at least Warden is big enough to crash it in. Honestly, maybe I should have sent in earlier when it had uh, two power. Or maybe, I don't know, I forget which creature it was. And the opponent reanimates the Harvester and has a Bowmasters to finish off our Spectre. So, just absolutely massacring our board right there. Now, I can just run out Witch Enchanter, but decided, like, that's just really low impact. And, like, we are, we are playing right into Bowmasters, but I, I feel like I needed some action there, so. We're going to play a new Thalia, but it's just, uh, it's looking pretty grim right now. That Harvester is incredibly strong against our deck, both, you know, with its, like, channel ability and when it enters. All right, let's see what the opponent has. So Harvester's coming in. Doesn't seem like a good, like, we could double block, but it just seems really bad for us, especially if they have a removal spell. So here comes Shielder, and things are, things are falling apart quickly. You need something... Okay, we have no removal on this deck. Um, just hoping to just sort of outmuscle people. End up putting away Thalia's attack. Like it just doesn't seem like enough. Can fall to 10 off the shielder trigger. Gonna play Meddling Mage and like now we know some stuff we can we can name, but it's too little too late, so gonna go ahead and name the one ring. But we're gonna just the opponent can just attack him with Harvester and, and, and camp on uh, Shielder triggers and we'll just sort of die. So, um, this has been sort of tough. So, the opponent's going to attack in again. Oh, maybe I should have blocked it with two creatures, but we, you know, I'm sort of hoping for like that pro white spell that maybe we can make, sneak in for some damage, but it's looking real bad for us. So yeah, I just go ahead and pack it in and yeah, they had another kill spell. So, that one didn't go well. Oh yes, Brave the Elements. That's what I was talking about last time. So the first hand didn't have enough creatures. So um, this one is tough because we have our our tap land in hand. So we can't like empty our hand as proficiently as normal. Uh, turn one Mystic Sanctuary on the other side. So we're gonna start with Guide of Souls. I did keep it, you know, we have one drops so we can like still reasonably deploy stuff. Unhappy, you know, so we'd love an untapped source to just slam Thalia right here. Against Mill, like, that's going to tax most of their stuff. Alright, so, let's see what the opponent does. They're going to Fatal Push Guide of Souls, so, opponent had a very efficient turn. Did not draw the untapped source. Would have loved it. Brave the Elements, um, I don't want it, but I'm leaving it on top because the opponent is, you know, like, 95% going to mill it. So we'll let them get rid of it for us, basically. Now, there's the Glimpse of the Unthinkable. And... Yeah, so... The question is, do we try and Meddling Mage name something? Or just play Thali, which we know is going to just tax all their spells. Except for Ruin Crab. That is rough. All right, so now the opponent has double crabs. So we just got to pray they don't find any fetches, because we are going to annihilate our library pretty quickly. Down to 28. So the opponent could have like drawn on the lock or something. We don't have cavern to stop. I mean, they can just kill it on, after it's on the way down. So, meddling mage. I'm um, gonna go ahead and name Tasha's hideous laughter because that is still is relatively strong against us. And 
bolt that in and play a Thraben Inspector, but we just have, it's just a brutal sequence here. Like we were a little bit slow with our tap land. Don't have anything that can attack through the crabs. We do have a Copper Coat Vanguard in hand that's gonna help get milled a lot there. And then Mesmeric Orb is bad news. So I'm gonna accelerate through this, but that's gonna mill us one card for every thing we untap. So, you know, scanning their graveyard to see like what could I possibly name? But we, we had to play Copper Coat here. We need to just start getting some damage dealt. Unfortunately, the opponent is still gonna be able to soak up a ton because we have some two power attackers here. So, we get them to 11, but those crabs are really, I mean, I they've gained the opponent a ton of like virtual life. So the opponent is going to get Mesmeric Orb to themselves. And the opponent does rip a glimpse. And we have seven cards left. And we are untapping exactly seven permanents. So just really unfortunate. We're going to die exactly to mill right here. we so close to pulling that out. So that was a tough one. But we got to move on to the next one. All right. Turn one thought sees from the opponent. Taking a meddling mage. All right, gonna name human on cavern, of course. Play warden of the inner sky. Hand still looks pretty good despite the thought sees. Dark ritual is bad news. Necro is worse news. All right, so opponent um, necros once, then decides, you know what? Let's get some selection. So they're gonna crack their fetch, surveil, and then I'm gonna sell it through this. So the point it just takes a while to execute. So the opponent's gonna necro a handful of times. And Meddling Mage is going to be strong in this matchup because they're obviously like a combo deck, but the opponent finds a surgical for the back breaking. So they, oh man, it is incredibly good. So they thought seized the first Meddling Mage, they just surgicaled the other one out of our hand by hitting the one in the graveyard. So was feeling like we were sitting pretty, like, oh, can just like name uh, Tendrils of Agony or something with Meddling Mage and just be perfectly safe so uh feeling pretty bad now so i'm deciding right here do i attack for one or do i charge up the warden like there is something to be said for attacking and keeping their life total low for necro but um i don't know i just felt like the scry might help and the opponent plays the land Let's see what happens cracks it mishra's bobble dark ritual Beseech the mirror, sacrificing Bobble into another Beseech. So they're building up the storm count right here. And there's Underworld Breach. And so I'm going to accelerate here because they start, you know, loop doing the Dark Ritual loops. So then they cast a Demonic Tutor means that that's over for us. So go ahead and pack it in. So that was a tough one. The opponent had like a perfect opener. Like they didn't even dig that deep with Necro and found a Surgical. You know, it's like if they missed on Surgical there, we, we might have been able to get them pretty good. But it's pretty obvious in this next game that we're playing against Show and Tell with the, the Ley Line in the battlefield. So with that information already giving it away, we're going to slam Meddling Mage and just name Show and Tell and watch them squirm. So we're going to attack with Warden. Decided to use Meddling Mage instead of uh, Thalia because it's just... We know exactly how to get them right now. All right, there's the, the surveil land. Now, now Thalia is also gonna be super strong against them, but wanted just to be like super safe. Just playing like layers of protection right here, so we can just get a planes, play our other inspector, charge up warden of the inner sky, which has been really strong. Guide of souls is like another like really recent strong addition for humans, so. All right, so we're gonna crash in for four damage. So the opponent still has a reasonable amount of time, but we hope to like increase the clock. So thought sees, and yeah, as we get ready to battle against show and tell right here, uh, let me know in the comments, like what are your favorite creature types to play? Slivers, vampires, elves, let me know. All right, so the opponent took our witch enchanter, and I have no idea why, because Thalia's attendant like just basically like kills them right here so we're doing warden to like and yeah the opponent just packs it in so 
feels pretty good to beat up on show and tell. Some of the other decks I play, like uh, Colorless Super Friends, for example, it has a horrible show and tell matchup. And so that's sort of like why this deck was born, is because, like, what would a really good a deck that's really good against show and tell look like? And I already had some ideas about a human's deck. I'm like, all right, let's just throw in all the hate pieces and try and have a reasonable clock. So that that's what happened. I, I nearly played this in the qualifier, but you you anyway. This deck doesn't match up super well against energy, which is why I ultimately didn't play it. So I do think it's like it has a reasonable place in the meta game. Like you've seen, we've been doing pretty well against a lot of different decks. All right, so. Now it's already clear that we're playing another show and tell deck. So Thalia is already making their life difficult. So we're just going to name show and tell again with the meddling mage. Guide of Souls is going to trigger and we're going to crash in. And opponent just packs it. It's like, you know, meddling mage is pretty strong. Uh, if you can, if you can name the right thing, you know, maybe there's something to be said about like some sort of Grief plus Thoughtseize Meddling Mage deck. That way you can get the information and then like completely like slam the door shut. You know, once you grief them, then like slam Meddling Mage. Maybe there's something to that. It, it, it is unfortunate it doesn't pitch to Grief, but I think you could still cook something up there. So Fetch Land, trying to figure out what to do. Like, have no information for Meddling Mage right now, so like, it would be completely in the dark, like that, you know, Windswept Heath could be any number of decks. So, decide it's worth it to hold up the Brave the Elements, just considering how potent Guide of Souls is, and because we don't have really enough Meddling Mage naming information right now. Alright, Red Green Land. Let's see what the opponent's cooking up. So the opponent... It's thinking, plays another fetch, cracks it. Malevolent Rumble. All right, Season Pyro and Invasion of Urgamon, a couple lands. Well, now we know some stuff we can name at the very least. And the opponent put the Season Pyro into their hand. They're gonna pass to us. There's Thalia's Lieutenant. Um, gonna go ahead and bolt the Witch Enchanter landing because might as well keep up Brave the Elements if we you know, have the option, but given that they have Season Pyro, I'm just going to name Season Pyro a Meddling Mage right here. So we're going to go ahead and type that in, and still is unclear what the opponent is doing, though some of you with like more timeless experience might already know what, what's happening right here, but at the time I was playing, I did not know what was going on. So we've at least locked down one spell in their hand, so we're going to crash in Knock them to 15. Pass. All right, another surveil land. Utopia sprawl hits the bin, and the opponent has another strong three mana play in Fable of the Mirror Breaker. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pass again. So there's actually a lot of options here. We can like Thraben Inspector, Thali's Lieutenant, and Knight Errant of Eos, or not go quite as all in and try and get some attacks so you know if we convoked out the knight we would be like leaving a lot of damage on the table right now so I decided it's better to just send in right here and once again the question of what what to dump the guide of souls counters on decide to put it on meddling mage and the opponent's thinking and opponent just takes it. So opponent falls to six. And Fable's gonna go off. And they pitch an omniscience. And that's when I realized, like, you could see me mousing with the graveyard, like, oh no. Didn't didn't expect to see that. I thought it was like some sort of red-green mid-range deck. So opponent attacks and presumably just harvesting mana off the goblin. So I'm gonna block in this manner. All right, and then waiting to see what happens. Opponent taps, Utopia sprawls. Still waiting, and it's Brotherhood's end, which is just a huge, huge problem. So that kills 
everything except the meddling mage, and then they have Seed of Hope to buy back a Fable. So we got sent to the Stone Ages. I mean, we still have a 5-5 five five out. Like, that's, that's not nothing. And, like, just the one time we went shields down with the Brave of the Elements is when they got us. Like, that would have been, like, a huge blow. I mean, that, we would just straight up won the game right there if we still had one mana up. So maybe maybe it was greedy. Like, maybe I should have just gone Thalia's Lieutenant and held up the one mana, considering how potent it was going to be already. So that 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 was probably misplaying my part, being overzealous right there, playing right into that wrath effect. All right, so Porn's going to cash grab. So they have all the self mill permanent finding stuff, malevolent rumble, cash grab, seed of hope. All right, so I'm going to grab a one ring and cast the ring. So now we have Brave the Elements up, but it's like too little too late. Basically, the one turn we went shields down is when we got got. All right, so Punk's going to activate the ring. And Shifting Woodland. So now it becomes clear, like, it, it had the look of a mid-range deck at first, but it's really a combo deck with the same Omniscience and Shifting Woodland. So that is what's going on, and the opponent definitely has Delirium. All right, so... And they're going to end step uh, Seed of Hope also. So the, the incidental life gain from that is also really helping them. Like, So they have ring protection right now, so we can't get them. So it's a matter of you know mustering up as much power and toughness as we can at the moment. Decide to just play Dahlia's Lieutenant, juice up our creatures, and activate Warden of the Inner Sky. Holding on to Knight Errant of Yos. The Raven Inspector is not really doing a whole lot right now. And the opponent, once again, they have ring protection, so we have to sort of pass. The opponent falls to four. Let's see what happens. They play their fetch land. And bracing for impact. Alright, so there's Shifting Woodland turning into Omniscience. So they have Omniscience for the rest of this turn. So we're going to draw off the one ring. And. All right, Fable. They, once again, they still can't cast Season Pyro because of Meddling Mage. So, really need to see what's going on. Like, what was this all leading to? Here's Karn, the Great Creator. All right. And they're activated Karn. And I played Karn in my Color of Super Fans deck recently. <clears throat> so, they're going to fetch Ancestral Statue, which, when it enters, you have to return a permanent to its owner's hand. Now, I hadn't seen this before, but what's going to happen, the opponent ends up looping this like a million times, then eventually returns Karn, who then comes down and minuses for Aetherflux Reservoir, and since they cast so many spells, they just need to cast one more, and then like Death Stars. This deck was pretty sweet, like I really enjoyed playing it, and it's definitely fun to slap around show and tell, like it's really strong at doing that. One thing I should mention, though, I played it some other games afterwards, you didn't get to see it, but like it does not do well against energy, like I don't know how to like explain it but it just it doesn't do really well against energy like our types of disruption don't line up very well against it and another thing i was wishing in general is that we had more like lord effects like if we had like some more copies of thalia's lieutenant or copper coat vanguard it'd be really nice um there are ones that exist at like three mana but anyway it just it's just something i'm not quite sold on this current configuration another thing is like we would love something like giver of runes but it's not a human and so that sort of became like Brave the, the Elements. Like if we had Mother of Runes, like that'd be really awesome. It is vulnerable to Bowmasters, but it'd be like really, really strong in this type of deck. Um, you could rock some Esper Sentinels. Like there's a lot of directions you could take it. If you wanted to ditch the sort of Warden of the Inner Sky, like clue synergies, you can go with Recruitment Officer and more like two power creatures to crash in for more damage. But you are opening yourself up more against Bowmasters. So there's just trade-offs all over the place. And, a ton of options is what to play. Adeline's super strong. You could play some more hate cards. I was strongly considering Imodane's Recruiter as like a pseudo lord that can crash in for a bunch of surprise damage. Um, you could work in some solitudes if you want. Um, anyway, I'm not quite certain about that. Another thing to be aware of is that this deck is Gigantha Companion legal. I ultimately didn't play it because, you know, it would have, it's currently built you'd have to just name elk off a cavern of souls and i didn't feel like that was consistent enough to be worth the giving it the advantage away sorry giving the information away 
but you could just toss a single temple garden in there and let the fetches sort of find it and then boom you have Gigantha. So maybe maybe, I was, maybe it was a mistake to not include it in there as the companion since that can be a way to uh, use Manawek when you're flooding out. So, But yeah, this is I, I think this has potential in Timeless. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see even more nonsense, please consider subscribing. And if you already subscribed, thank you for your support. Your engagement with the channel helps me know what the people want. Thank you.